Hello, my lovelies. I had done a video previously, right before, but <clears throat> excuse me, my bag is in my way. Now I get to sit back. So yeah, waiting for some clients this evening, and I'm just chilling. So if you see me doing a little bit of this, it's because I'm busy looking. Anyway, so I kind of wanted to come on and in my previous little video that I started before, <clears throat> I was discussing um, money and the fact that people um, work so hard to get money, to obtain success or whatever. And then they make this money and they become a slave to it because now they got to make sure they keep making this money. Um, and for me, I don't let money control me. I control my money. Um, I don't work for money. My money works for me. Um, I'm currently behind the chair because I love what I do. Otherwise, I would not be behind the chair. I would be doing other things or starting other businesses because I think I'm more of a startup person than the one keeping the business in check all the time. Like I can start something, start the fire, and then you have to be responsible for keeping it going, um, keeping that fire going. But um, <clears throat> I know that so many people are stuck in situations um, because of money. They're stuck in miserable jobs or in, mis in business, miserable partnerships because of financial gain or financial instability. And the problem is, is that money gives you a false sense of hope and a false sense of stability because you think that without it, you are nobody. And it also makes you question your self-worth because you think that if you do not have enough money, you are not important. And there's a lot of social status quo type shit around money. And you know what? I'd rather be poor and happy in my little shack uh, than to have all this money, all this uh, all this responsibility to continue making this money um, and all the stress and the worry that comes with keeping up with the Joneses. I am not that person. I will wear a no-name brand shirt as so. This might have cost me 10 bucks, maybe $15. Doesn't, doesn't say or doesn't mean that I don't have designer things. Uh, but it doesn't, but I don't value my worth um, by the money that I have or the things that I have. Because if I don't have um, a G, G uh, tongue twister, if I don't have a G wagon, a Mercedes G truck, uh, doesn't mean that I am any less important when I pull up with my Ford. So it doesn't matter to me. Um, I drove a Corolla for 15 years and I would have still had it if I wasn't pushed to get the hell out of it. So yeah, money, status, all that bullshit, it ain't shit to me. Money comes, money goes, um, and to me it doesn't control me. And when I say it doesn't control me, what I mean is that I am not dying to be the next, you know, whatever, you know, keeping up with the Kardashians and all that other bullshit. Like, that's not who I am. Um, if I have a stable foundation where I'm making enough money to pay for the lifestyle that I currently have, a little bit better so I can have a child and call it a day that to me is enough now there are people out there that want way more than that now I'm not saying that I'm not an entrepreneur and that I'm not working towards building an empire of course everybody is but I'm not saying that's my number one thing my number one thing is to be happy to be healthy to be a good person to love unconditionally even if it kills you because there are some people that are not easy to love um, but you gotta have patience compassion understanding 
Um, you gotta love yourself because you know if you don't love yourself, you'll settle for anything and you'll settle for people's bull crap and you'll feel stuck in life. And so, you know, I no longer feel stuck in life because I released myself from the chains that bound me. You know, I set myself free from it, you know. Um, life is not easy, but I don't let money control me as far as where I can't live without a certain amount well, that sounds like I'm being full of shit. Um, you need a minimum standard living. You know, you need a minimum amount of money to at least survive. But um, I'm not killing myself for money. You know, like if I don't feel like coming into the salon and I know that I don't have any clients booked, I'm not going to sweat it. I'm not coming in. You know, if I have to move money from my savings, from that account to this account, from stock and from blah, whatever the hell I have my money in, I'll move it around so that I can take a day, a mental health day. I will go get a massage. I will go get my nails and feet done. You know, I will just go drive to the beach or to the top of a mountain and just be in peace with myself, by myself. You know, like I'm content with myself. And being by myself so that's something that you need to strive for because if you think that it's all money <laughs> you have another thing coming um I want another gift card today at work I don't know how many gift cards I have sitting in my office just chilling there just <laughs> money flowing my way and it sounds stupid but I just gave my mom a $50 gift card the other day I said here mom this $50 to home goods go get yourself whatever the heck you want she's like where's this come from why'd you get I, like, I didn't get it I want it so I don't care and that's how you have to be you can't be holding on so tight to stuff to money to everything you got because you know what you do all this and that's the sooner like sand it comes it starts to fall right out of your palm you know, you cannot grip onto something so much because that's when you're going to have nothing. You know, when you put so much effort into having it, that's when you don't have it. Or you won't get the abundance that you're expecting. So, don't put your mind solely on making moolah because moolah is not the only thing in this life. There are memories and experiences to be had. Um, growing up, my cousin's children, who are my nieces and nephew, nephews, now I have three nephews, and how many nieces? Three nieces. There's Kiara, Jada, Joey, LG, Isaiah, and then, and then on my ex's side, those kids were my kids too, six of them. So 12 altogether between the two families, and you know we always he did too i said i don't care what you spend on those kids you make sure that they have good memories with you as their uncle we go out we take them to the movies we go get some ice cream we do like these are things that are priceless you can't take your money with you when you die so what the hell are you hoarding it for you know so i remember taking the kids to kingsburg taking them to that's like an amusement park in jersey uh, taking them to Six Flags, uh, Seaside Heights, to do this, to do that, to the movies. We would take them to the lake. I would take them just by myself. And my little Corolla, I had three of them because they were the youngest at the time. They're all the grown-ups now. And then we have um, the two younger boys. And I take the two younger boys. Last summer, we were at the lake boating. You know, I took the two boys, just myself and my nephews. I took them out to explore and have a good time. And then they were like... I wish we could watch a movie. I said, you want to watch a movie? Boom. PP found the tickets. I, as a matter of fact, I think I had tickets that I accumulated from my AMC membership because I like to take the kids to the movies. And my nieces, they always are like, Titi, you want to go see a movie with us? So I got the rewards points from AMC so I could take them to the movies. And these are things that I don't really care to be in the movies, but because I'm with them, this is what they like to do. I'm going to enjoy it too, and I'm going to live in the moment. 
Um, and it's funny because they've learned to just get in the car and go for rides because that's what I used to do. And I used to do that with them. I used to say, hey guys, what are you up to? What are you doing? Okay, I'm on my way. Get ready, get dressed. And I'd be like, I'll be there in 20 minutes. You better be ready. And sometimes it took a little longer. One of them, the oldest girl, she would always take forever. And I'm like, oh, Joey, was your sister? Titi, I told her, she said she was on her way out. So she would kill us because she was always taking the longest. But um, love her. And if you see this, Jade, I love you too, baby. And now she has twins. So she has a boy and a girl. The little bubbles. And so uh, I'm looking forward to spoiling them too. Spoiling them rotten. I asked for them. I prayed for those little kids and they showed up. I'm like, wow. I didn't expect them to show up that fast. They showed up real quickly. Um, doctors told her she couldn't have any children. And um, I prayed for twins and I prayed for a boy and a girl. And then one day she came to the house. She was devastated because she was like 21, pregnant didn't think she could ever have children so she, this is what she thought and I'm like it ain't over until the creator says it's over baby I said no don't let any doctor or anybody tell you you can't because there's always a way and so I said the father the creator has the last say and sure enough we found out she wasn't pregnant with one there were two she was freaking out I'm almost like just give them to me I'll take them and so come to find out they were two different sexes and I was like I said I knew it I told her I was like I asked for them and she was like no way I was like I asked for a boy and a girl and I asked for the twins and it was funny because I had told her the whole story the whole dream that I had and her father it's crazy my cousin he dreamt of them too we have a very prophetic psychic I don't know these gifts are weird so my cousin when his ex-wife was pregnant with the kids, he remembered seeing his daughter and described her exactly. And then when his youngest was about to come out, Jacob, he says, I know that he's going to look like this and this and that. He's going to look just like Jada. And sure enough, he came out exactly. We all cried because we were like, oh my goodness, you were right. You, how did you know? But like he was spot on. He knew. And so it was freaking awesome. And so he saw his grandchildren. Mind you, this could have been like three, four years ago. He said, I had a dream. My grandchildren like this and like that. Blue eyes. They were light-eyed children. They were beautiful, blah, 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 blah. And guess what? She has two blue-eyed babies. And they're so cute. And she has porcelain skin. She looks like a little doll herself. So her babies look just like her beautiful babies and um, I'm lucky that you know I'm around to see them and again this is what matters guys it doesn't matter about all the money you obtain the memories that you create with those that you love whether they be your friends whether they be the person you're with you know your partner in crime that's what's important I remember so many times I just get in a car and, and have these little road trips and stuff um we did backyard camping in my house with the kids and the family the adults we said i bought a fire pit and i said it was like in the fall i don't know how many years ago i told the kids oh because we had done night under the stars we had a flat um we had gotten a screen because my youngest niece had figured out how to uh project um a movie from her cell phone with this little box that she had made. I guess it was maybe a homework project, school project or something. So she figured this out. She said, Titi, I can make a projector with my cell phone and I can use this thing, da, da, da. So we decided to set up the whole backyard in my aunt's house. And we had popcorn. It was like glamorous, glamorous movie night in my aunt's yard. It was the best night. So from there, we had decided this is really nice. We called it a movie or a night under the stars. That was that theme. And then I decided, well, why don't we do camping outside in the yard? And they were all for it because it was the fall, of course. So I had gotten this fire pit and we were going to roast marshmallows and we were going to make s'mores with the kids and everything like that. And so my dad, we were out there and he was making this makeshift tent. It was with tarp. So it went to, I think he had a tarp already because of some stuff that we had done at the house. And so we built this huge tent outside. And then when I had gotten married, I had this gazebo thingy that I made or prepared uh, for an outdoor 
wedding that was really nice and so we used that as well to kind of help support so that whatever to use it and it was so freaking cool my aunt had a cock that she's like i'm not sleeping on the grass my dad slept on the grass had bugs tear his ass up so freaking funny to see my dad knocked out and guess what all of us the kids and i we all went into my room because i had the biggest room and they were like all on my carpet on the bed i have a king size bed and they were just all over the place i was stepping over kids but we were we did not stay outside we were like we're not getting stung or whatever we didn't want to deal with the bugs but all the adults well i should be one of the adults but i'm like the biggest kid in the group and so I took all the kids and I said, let's go, let's go inside. We're not sleeping out here. And my niece almost burned the whole yard. It was so funny. She burned a ring because she tipped over the fire pit. I guess we were trying to turn it, like, turn it out, turn it off at night. And I don't know what happened, why we didn't have the damn fire hose with us. But we had it after that. We figured it out. We were like, we need the fire hose. So, but like, these are things that we've done. You know, we've rented homes down the shore um, in upstate we've done Pennsylvania the Poconos I've done um, a lot of things like that and we invite all the kids all the cousins and we do a little family reunions and this is what we do we have a good time talking trash to one another making fun of each other um, you know making food because everybody can cook in my family everybody I'm not this voluptuous for nothing and um, I come from a long line of good cooks, chefs, pastry chefs as well. Um, my father's side, many of them have restaurants in Puerto Rico. And my uncle, I think, was supposed to... No, he never made one out here. But in Puerto Rico, there were plenty of restaurateurs. And um, my mom catered parties for fun. That was her little side thing, just because she enjoyed it. Um, not a lot, but she had catered a few events for relatives and stuff like that, which, you know, excuse me, the women in the kitchen, as a matter of fact, one of our traditional meals or dishes around this time of year is pateles, which is like, I guess you could say it looks like a tamal, like a Mexican style tamal. And so pateles is um, a mixture of different scraped up um, plantains and things like that of that nature and you mash them and you or you grate grate them I'm looking at the door to see if somebody was knocking I don't think so um, anyway so you mash it up you make this like masa and then you put meat inside usually it's pork meat but I don't do pork and my aunt knows that I don't do pork so she made chicken ones and they were the bomb.com Titi thank you Thank you for looking out for me and for Jada, because my my oldest niece, the one with the twins, she doesn't do pork either. The kid was 11 years old. She's 22 now. The kid was 11 years old, and she had a science project or something or what have you that she had to pick an animal and write about them. And she wrote about the pig and how they were intelligent and all this other stuff. And it was freaking amazing because she had such willpower she's stubborn she's a Taurus and so she's like I'm not eating pork ever again and we were like she gonna eat pork one day she accidentally had a piece of pork she wanted to die she cried and cried she threw it up she threw everything up she made sure she threw it up because she's like I could never it was bad but um she's been trying to get a micro pig but now that she has two little piglets she doesn't need a micro pig that's just too much work for her but she's like always said oh i want a pig farm i was like okay now the other niece she wants a kitten farm i'm like you're crazy but i told her if i get enough land you can have your kitten farm um but whatever anywho family that's what it's all about you know those memories and i don't know this time of year i know there's paganism behind it all it's bullshit, people buying crap, getting into debt just to buy things for each other. And, you know, it stems back to Nimrod, ancient Nimrod. And it stems back to a lot of other pagan um, religions and stuff that started the tree and the decking of the balls and silver and gold on the tree. It's in Jeremiah. talks about it to not do it, not do as the heathens do. Cutting down a tree from the woods and, you know, putting it in your house and nailing it down. 
Like I know all that behind all of that crap. Um, but for me, I enjoy being with my family. So whatever it takes to get them all together, it's a nice thing. So remember that money is not everything. Money comes, money goes, and at the end of the day, being loved, sharing love, making memories, um, and living a happy life. Like, I know some people say oh, that's not realistic. Look, I grew up in a toxic environment, but there were still good times. There were still good memories. And just because you're used to being in toxicity doesn't mean you have to stay in toxicity. You gotta choose to change. Um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. You have to change your circumstances, your environment. You have to heal yourself so that all the things that you do around your, you know, your friends, family, whatever, you enjoy. Um, there's no reason to be miserable or to become somebody that you're not because you're stuck. Um, you know? I hope some of this resonated with somebody because money ain't shit. Memories. There's wealth in memories. There's an abundance of wealth in loving and being compassionate towards others. Being kind. Helping your community. Helping those in need. Doing something for someone that can't do something back for you. Being selfless, being of service now, those are things, those are up there. Those are things of true value. Those are things that you cannot buy. Um, having integrity, having morals, you know, those are things that, like I said, you cannot put a price tag on any of those things. So I hope that whether you celebrate the pagan holiday, the massacre of the indigenous, or not, massacre of millions and millions of turkeys all over the U.S. It's like freaking ritual. Um, but if you just enjoy it with your families because of that unity and that being able to just spend time and gather together, if that's why you do it, then I hope you enjoy yourself with those that you love. Um, I know that I'm going to do that. And um, I just pray that you all, you know, check yourselves before you wreck yourselves. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm cheesy. I know. But um, I truly just hope that, you know, you are cautious. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I love it. Oh, my God. I love it. So, yeah, I hope you guys are well. Love you guys. Be well. Take care.